Miss Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, finally, I get a chance to come on and do Bible study. Lord was willing today. I have had the worst headache, and um, so it's been a rough few days. Wednesday, um, I actually went to church Wednesday night, and we are uh, actually going to another church. And the church service starts at 630 and so I missed y'all on Wednesday night. So we've got to reschedule Wednesday night studies to be an hour earlier. Plus, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, I've had a terrible, terrible migraine. And some of y'all seen my message. Um, and I have taken medicine for it. I take Imitrex, which is a drug for migraines. It is not for pain. It is for migraines. It actually uh, dilates the blood vessels so that the blood flows faster. And it works. Uh, however, I've been having headaches uh, since I was in my early 20s. And so when I get a bad one, nothing really works except for temporary. So I'll give an idea. Like Wednesday, I got up. I started getting my headache kind of early. Um, I actually have shots now that I take, which I've just started getting those a couple of months ago. I've been taking Imitrex since I was in my 20s. So over 20 years now. Um Anyway, so I took a shot that morning, was pretty good until about 4, so I took a shot that evening. I made it to church. That was Wednesday. Yesterday, I had the headache. Um, I took a pill in the morning. I thought I was going to be good to go, and about 4 o'clock, my head started hurting so bad, I had to take another shot, and so um, I missed Bible study because I was feeling rough, and today, I had the headache again but I took a pill today and um, so now I'm feeling like doing Bible study hopefully it'll be gone tomorrow I sure hope so because I got some filming I need to do but we have a good Bible lesson today and um, migraines for me are normal y'all just don't you know I think those of you been watching me for a while y'all know they are because um, I've had them at least once a month since I was in my 20s and um, when I was pregnant, I didn't have one headache, period. So they're hormone. Um, and what's so crazy is I'm now in um, menopause. I haven't had a cycle in month. I mean, like over a year, but I still get my headaches. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, um, enough of that, right? So we. it's crazy because my mother had them, and when she had her hysterectomy, she actually stopped having headaches, and um, I was hoping that would happen to me when I went into menopause, but it didn't, so I may have to have a hysterectomy before it's over. Who knows? We are in um, the book by Charles Stanley. I looked at yesterday since we missed it because I like his Bible studies, and um I really like the study yesterday, so I'm going to do yesterday's and today because they actually tie in three verses at the bottom together. I'm also going to um, play uh, the reading of the Bible through an app so y'all don't have to listen to me read the Bible. Um, but this one is January the 23rd, which was yesterday. It's called The Glorious Rest. And it says, Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. And uh, this comes out of Psalms 116, verse 7. Um, and then he references it into Genesis, which is what I'm going to have the Bible reading talk about. But anyway, it says, Do you feel tired? Most people I talk to do. And it says, It's not just a physical fatigue that people feel. It goes much deeper. It is a mental and spiritual weariness that comes from so many years of struggling, carrying burdens, and doing the right thing. The reality, the, yeah, the reality of facing seven years of devastating famine probably made Pharaoh feel very drained. And yet, after hearing the plan God spoke through Joseph, Pharaoh did something interesting. He renamed Joseph to... And I don't think I will pronounce this correctly, but it's Zephanath Panea. Panea. Zephanath Panea. This comes out of Genesis chapter 41, verse 45, 
which can be translated as the treasury of glorious rest. That's what he named Joseph. If y'all know the story of Joseph, Joseph is the guy who was born into the family of all the brothers, and his daddy, he was his daddy's favorite. He made him the coat of many colors, and his brothers uh, dumped him into a pit, and he was sold into slavery. He wound up having these dreams. Uh, no, he wound up being able to interpret dreams. He actually had a few dreams when he was young, too. But he was able to interpret the Pharaoh's dreams, and he became the Pharaoh's right-hand man. So, um, I'm going to read to you out of Genesis 41. I'm actually going to let this app read to you out of Genesis 41, just so you can hear the scripture. And then we'll continue on with our Bible study. So, y'all listen. To the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Panea, and he gave him to wife. Okay, so you, I, I guess y'all could hear that. Um, it's very low. It's my old Apple uh, iPad that was reading that to you, and um, that is actually what I, the only thing I used to have for audio to do my videos, and that's why lots of my older videos, you can't even hear anything I say. But he said the word much better than I did, Pharaoh's new, um, Joseph's new name. But it says uh, that the Pharaoh saw rest in him. He said he saw the wisdom God had spoken through Joseph as a cause for peace and repose. We would do well to learn from this. It says what we have in our relationship with Jesus is an fathomable treasure of glorious rest and life. We can always find tranquility and refreshment in his leadership, provision, and care. So if you're feeling tired today, return to the Prince of Peace, who will never fail you. That is in John chapter 14. Um, I think I think it was Monday or Tuesday I told y'all to read John. It's such a beautiful chapter. And, you know, you can get these audio app, Bible apps. You can just go... If you have a moment, if you you know if you if you can't see well or reading is not your thing, you can get the Bible apps that are audio. You can download them, and you can lay in the bed and press the play button and just lay back and listen to the words of the scripture, and um, it it's wonderful. So uh, do it that way if you have a hard time reading or keeping your uh, like a lot of people that read. They have a hard time keeping their attention on what they're reading without their mind going everywhere else. So maybe if you could uh, go to your bedroom in a quiet place and turn on that app and listen to about three chapters a day, you could get through the Bible in a year. Um, anyway, it says, so if you're feeling tired today, return to the Prince of Peace, who will never fail you. Seek Jesus to give rest to your soul. And that comes out of Matthew chapter 11. And while we're in Matthew chapter 11, we go on to the next Bible reading, which is Revealing God, January 24th. And it is Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. And this one says, No one truly knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And this one uh, talks about feeling distant from God. And so um, it says, do you ever feel so distant from God that you wonder if you'll ever really know him or his will for your life? Then take heart. The word for reveal in today's verse is, and he gives us this Greek word, um, akaputo. The prefix apo means separation. The word kalupsis means to hide or veil. In other words, this means to separate the veil. Think of that in terms of what Jesus did at the crucifixion. It says in Mark chapter 15, it tells us that Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his, and breathed his last breath. 
it says the veil of the temple was torn in two, two, the, the number two, from top to bottom. Remember, the veil separated everyone from the Holy of Holies, where God's presence was said to dwell. Only the high priest was allowed to approach him there one time a year. But when the veil was torn from top to bottom, it signified that Jesus has succeeded in removing all that separated us from the Father. Isn't that the most exciting thing ever? Is that just not unbelievable that when he was crucified, that veil was torn from top to bottom and nobody tore it but Jesus Christ and God himself. And um, that's why we do not have to go through a high priest to pray to God. That veil has been torn and we have, Jesus did provide a way for us. Praise the Lord. So if you want to know Jesus as your Savior, but there's something dividing you from the Lord or something you need to know about him, do not fear. Instead, pray and trust Jesus to separate the veil for you in his time and way. Um, and this, uh, his little synopsis at the end of this chapter says, My hope is in Jesus because he reveals all I need to know. And it says, Jesus, thank you for revealing the Father to me. Amen. And I was thinking this the other day. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, my brother said something to me. <laughs> when Jesus walked the earth, you know, he was born um, as a simple carpenter's son. He wore simple clothing. He wore sandals uh, on his feet. Um, he was not robed in royalty here on the earth. And neither was John the Baptist, which was the one who came before him proclaiming his name. John the Baptist wore rags, uh, was pretty much a wild, homeless, crazy looking guy. And um, he was actually the spokesman for Christ and his coming. And I think that's one reason why the Pharisees had such a hard time believing that God could have been in Jesus because look at Jesus, look at John the Baptist, look where they came from. It, they were expecting someone that was royal and, and so different than what was given to them. And I think uh, when Christ got here, he taught us what humility is and how to be humble. And there's no way that he could have done it any better than to be born a simple carpenter's son and to be revealed through a man like John the Baptist. Um, because we are to be humble, and he tells us to clothe ourselves in humility. And we should never feel like we're more than we ought to be, because we're not. And we should never uh, think that someone, because of their rank um, in this world, or uh, whatever it may be, their clothing, anything about a person could never make them any more holy than somebody else. Um, and a good example of that is just looking at how Jesus was brought out to us and how John the Baptist was. And... Um, I just think it's a good example for us to understand that uh, we are not to judge anybody, um, their hearts, by what they are on the outside. Only God knows what's on the inside. And um, we are to always be humble and make ourselves feel, you know, we should always feel humble. And not just feel humble, but try to be humble and love everybody uh, just as Christ did. And I think of him bringing... Uh, I was listening to John the other day, and um, I was actually listening to it on the app like I told y'all about, because it's such such a nice thing to do, just to be able to lay in the bed and listen to the stories. And it was talking about how the Pharisees, you know, wanted to have something to uh, accuse him of, so they brought him the woman that they had caught in adultery, and they said, you know, this woman has been, uh, she has been caught in adultery, and what do you have to say about this? And so they thought he was going to say something that would, um, they thought he would say stoner because that was the law. 
And instead of saying stone her, which is, you know, a lot of people are like the law. Remember that the law is important. It was important for the Jews, for them to see what was right and wrong. And, um, but remember when Jesus came, um, it's not all about the law anymore. It's more about our hearts. And so instead of answering them with a law, he said, if any man be without sin, let him cast the first stone. And one by one, they began to disappear and walk away. Um, and that just goes to show he loved the, the woman, even if she was caught in adultery. Um, he loved her and he didn't condone what she was doing, but he let them know that there were, they were not without sin either. None of us are. And, and he looked at her and he said, go and sin no more. So remember that um, if you ever uh, find yourself thinking that you may or may not know more than somebody else or uh, may be better than somebody else, uh, just remember that none of us are better than anybody and we're all equal in the sight of God. So um, anyway, it's nice to be back on here tonight with y'all. I'm sorry about being out for a couple of days, but I truly was sick. And um, and for me to be sick enough not to come on, that's pretty good. I mean, pretty bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't take it lightly. So hopefully I'll get to see you again tomorrow. I am going to make a couple of videos. I'm probably not going to do them live tomorrow. Uh, I've got two uh, pieces of equipment that I need to do a review on, and I do not want, I didn't want to do those when I was sick, or I wouldn't have been in such a great mood for the video, but um, I think I've talked plenty with y'all tonight, and John, remember y'all, if you're ever in a position where you feel down, or ever in a position where you feel like you're not real sure about your salvation, or what salvation is all about, or you're in a position where you're not real sure if Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus is who he says he is. Maybe you're kind of like the Pharisees or you were born um, in a different culture where you feel like Jesus was more of a teacher or a prophet. All you have to do is pick up the Bible and read the book of John and he will reveal himself to you um, because it is a beautiful picture of the gospel. Um, I hope you all have a blessed night. Me and Chris were actually working on paperwork. Um, and we're balancing checkbooks. Can you believe that? I've downloaded a new program for our finances because I've just been doing it off the seat, flying off the seat of my pants. Um, and so we're <laughs> putting everything in there and it's taking forever. So he's calling out stuff and I'm checking it in the computer and it makes it go so much faster. But that's what we're working on tonight. So resting, I have done the last two days since I had the headache. And the next couple of days, it's going to be a lot of work. Um, anyway, if you're interested in, in these books, they're wonderful. Um, of course, number one book for me is the Bible. Um, I prefer the King James Version. Uh, I, I like the Amplified of the King James Version, and I, and I can even handle the ESV, which is the Engl English Standard Version, um, mainly because I don't like for words to be taken out like blood. And I know I'm old-fashioned, but, you know, blood we should be proud of because um, in the Old Testament, God um, required the blood of lambs as their uh, atonement for their sin. And the blood was real. And it was Jesus' blood that, shut, that actually saves us. And we should never be ashamed or feel like it's too harsh to talk about the blood of Jesus. Look what he went through to shed that blood for us. And that's what it took, y'all, his sacrifice. So we should never, um, I don't, that's why I, I'm real funny about the versions. I want to make sure that they don't take out important words. And I'm sure, you know, not all of them do. But another thing about the King James is you can read it all day long and, and it's not um, copyrighted, which is wonderful. Um, and who would want to copyright the Word of God anyway? Um, so, this is Charles Stanley's book, and it's called Jesus, Our Perfect Hope, and it's a wonderful uh, daily Bible uh, study. It is real short. It's just one little short page per day, and then I also have one that's a little bit deeper in some of its meanings and thinking, and it's Experiencing God Day by Day by Henry and Richard Blackaby, and it's really good, too. I like it. So, um, 
but you'll miss out if, if you know, the days that I'm not on here, uh, getting to hear the other words. Because every day, no matter what kind of a day you're having, there's always something in it that kind of uh, hits a good spot for you. Um, let's just say our prayers, and it's good to see everybody. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this Friday. We thank you for the good weather. We thank you for um, me being well enough to be on here tonight for everyone. And I pray that if for any reason they have not trusted you as their personal Savior, that they will pick up the Bible and read um, the book of John in the New Testament. I pray that um, those who are not doing their daily Bible reading will at least download the app on their little smartphones and just lay back in the mornings or evenings and lay back and have a quiet time to hop off Facebook long enough to um, listen to your word. Um, we have everything at our fingertips way much more and, and uh, easier and better than the, than the pe poor people in the Old Testament had it, have it had it we live in the edge of grace where your son has come and died um, and praise the lord for that uh, be with us as we go throughout tomorrow and help us be a shining light for you in christ's name we pray amen y'all have a good night love you bye